Hey, try and keep up with this truck, okay? Uh, I'll try, man. I know this truck's hey, really I fast. Back, I put it back in the race too, so I shouldn't have any problems. All right, we'll try to keep up with this old Denali, okay? I will, man. This LML. Try not to smoke me out too much. I'll try not to. One day, I'll grow up and my truck will sound like that. One day. I've deemed this truck to be the most practical setup, in my opinion, for any lifted truck. We'll do a full walk around explaining why this is the most practical setup. Everyone in our group, most of us, our primary trucks have seven to nine inch lift kits. Aside from like Stan, he used to have an 18 inch lift kit. So he was the one compensating the most, right? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> it's not a show truck. No. But it's starting to turn into one. I want it to be one. You actually use it. Oh yeah. You tow your camper with it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you guys don't believe me, there's a solid proof right here that this man actually uses his truck. Hey, there's a deer stand. Got a deer stand. The deer stand. Out of the way. You want to go to the deer stand? Yeah, I got yeah. to the deer stand you know, about every weekend. Yeah, that's disgusting. And you got a jack. But look, fifth wheel hookup right there. So he does actually use his truck for truck stuff, you know, camping. So, oh yeah? That's what all that is, blood. So he uses for hunting too. So, I mean, this truck gets used, you know, this, unlike most of our trucks in our group, this truck actually gets really used for what people claim, you know, truck stuff. A lot of people get upset whenever they see our vehicles, our show truck, and we don't really use them for what was intended for, right? But this guy over here actually uses his truck and actually makes it look good too. Let's kind of go over the setup. This is a four and a half inch BDS kit that was previously on, not this truck, but my last LML. And it's running the Kryptonite upper control arms, Kryptonite tie rod, and then you haven't done the idle iron pitman arm. Uh, I did the piss kit, yeah. Piss kit, okay. So, I mean, that's still a solid setup, right? front and then it's running 28 rock lights right he's rocking 28 rock lights jw motorsports co rock light you can go check it out right here got the headlights cleared by phil got the boost auto parts switchbacks the whole nine yards and uh this truck is running 22 12 on 36 inch versa tire some of you guys might be commenting saying that this truck should be running stock wheels you know that would make it more of a practical setup there's one thing though you run stock wheels with the Knight tie rods yeah you gotta run spacers yeah what would you rather have a wide wheel exactly or spacers i would much rather have a wide wheel and you have a lift kit so most lift kits you have to put a spacer because otherwise it'll hit the knuckle yep i like the fact that he went with 2212 because not only does he not have to use spacers with stock wheels does use it for towing his camper you really don't want to be adding any more extra hardware between your wheel and the tire so or your wheel and the truck okay. that was the reason why he went with the stanced option it also looks good but i think it adds stability when you're towing Oh yeah, it does. it does. I don't get near the sway I used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, sway bar on the rear would help a lot with that, but don't get near the body roll. Right. It helps a lot with the towing. I had to do the uh, airlift, bring the rear up because, you know, the Fox shocks, they just won't handle the, yeah. the weight of the camper. So, I mean, it'll level it right out. Pulled a Destin and went to the mountains for Thanksgiving and handled them Georgia mountains like a champ. For that, I really like the fact that he, he has it stanced. It definitely gives it stability while he's towing, but it also looks good. We all like the stanced look. Have you ever towed with your stock wheels and spacers? No. Because you don't like to? No. Okay, I wouldn't either. He's not just towing by or camping by himself. He's got his wife and two kids. Yeah. So he's got a lot to think about whenever he's towing with this truck. You know, he's he's taking care of his family. So That's the whole reason I did the uh, traction bars. Because with the lift kit, you don't yeah. want axle roll. Oh, yeah, exactly. When pulling, if you had to hit the brakes real hard. Mm -hmm. So I don't want that. So that's... They're not only for look, they're actually for a purpose. Aside from the lift wheel tires, I mean, he's got an airbags back here too. So no squatting. Yeah, we don't do that kind of stuff here. That's <laughs> gay. Let's talk about performance. This is a 2016 LML. Mm -hmm. I always say 2015. Always. I always <laughs> disrespect him by a year. But this is a 2016 LML, which it comes with a CP4 pump. You guys know that. He did a CP3 conversion, so that way you're not going to get stranded anywhere. You know, that would suck if you're towing your camper. Yeah, I can imagine. 10, 12 hours yeah. from home and your CP4 blows. Yep. He also has a lift pump here. Fast lift pump. Fast. That's all I knew at the time. I would have went with Air Dog. Yeah. I'm known better, but hey. I'm switching fun. over to an Air Dog, and I think Devin wants to switch over to an Air Dog, too. I want to switch over to Air Dog, yes. So we'll do mine first and then after how that switching swap process goes, we'll do his. It has the HSP piping, but it also has stealth 64 millimeter turbo. And the uh, one thing I do like is that you guys don't see this ugly box that would normally be here. This truck, when you bought it, the emissions were already removed. No. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. You yes. you wouldn't do that. Yeah. No. I don't do that. No. 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 It was already removed, and I like that because you're towing 12 hours away from home. You really don't want to one run out of death, and nah. two, you don't want the emission stuff leaving you stranded. Now, if it was like the newer trucks where it's right next to the uh, fuel door, yeah, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah. But trying to pull up into a parking lot, pulling a 36 foot fifth wheel, having to pop your hood, dump it into the you know under the engine bay, yeah. it's just not practical. I don't know if you guys know this, but anything older than a 2019 or 2020 Duramax, the dev fill hole. I can look. I think I still actually have mine. Yeah. I might have took it out. Oh, here. I did take it out. There's a beautiful. We yeah, have right here. Speed. Used to be right there? Right here. Well, you know what? We'll show everybody on mine. So, ironically, this is the first year that GM implemented DEF on these trucks. And then, so from 2011 all the way to 2019, mine's still there, right? Yeah. Oh, they got rid of you What? Yours has gone too. What? Okay, well, it used to be like right here. Yep. So, you had to pop the hood open and you had to add... The, your DEF right here. We would show you guys, but <laughs> our trucks came equipped, or should I say, didn't come equipped with some of the emission stuff. Could you imagine this truck is this tall? I mean, how tall are you? 5'11. Alright, you're 5'11 sitting next to your truck. That's kind of a reach. Sorry. I mean, you know what I mean? That's that's not comfortable. So, and what, what's the gallons of those plastic crappy cow piss tanks? Say it. It's like 15 bucks too, right? Yes, yeah, expensive. After you take it out of the cardboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about 15 bucks and you need I think, one I think they weigh around 25 pounds. And after you empty, you need two, I think. Okay. I used to just go to the gas station or the truck stops yeah. and use theirs. Yeah, but the, the bad thing about it is I used to do that too. The nozzle, it pumps so fast. You got to think an 18 wheeler, it's just a hole. It's yeah. like our fuel, just a hole. So it dumps in there. If you just hold that thing, it's going to pull out. Oh, it doesn't have a... You just click it, Yeah. it's going to... It's so fast because the hole, I mean, it's just a tiny But little it doesn't hole. have a sensor where it stops? Mm -mm. It'll the, pump oh, it right out. Oh, for real? Yep. The first time huh. <laughs> I did that, I didn't pump it all out to the engine bay. Yep, and then now it's going to crystallize all over your engine bay, yep. and it could lead into problems, right? So All over your battery, and that's the bad thing. Oh, yeah, because it's right next to the battery. Right next to the battery. For that reason, I would say this truck is one of the most practical trucks I've seen. You don't have to worry about the EF, you don't have to worry about CP4 pump, and you don't have to worry about wheel spacers breaking because you have the proper amount of offset. Yep. And I feel like 12 wides really isn't that wide. No, it's not. It uh, gives you, I don't have no turning problem. I can back into a campsite right. perfectly anywhere I go. So that's the main reason I would have gone 14 wides if it wasn't for the turning problem. Right. I don't want to be somewhere trying to back the camper in and not being able to turn fully. So. I mean, if you're watching this video and you're one of those guys that want to have a lifted truck and have a little bit of stance, but you don't want this much stance, go with 10 watts, you know, yep, 22 10 by 10 or 20 by 10. So that would still give you that little bit of poke, but I feel like 12 watts would give you more stability. Yep. Unhook the camper and go to the shed. Mm -hmm. Have you ever put stocks on this setup? Yeah, when I, uh, right after we did it, and that's how I know that you have to run the spacers. Yeah. Because right after we did the lift kit, I didn't have these rims until I think four months later yeah. because of the back order. So yeah, I had to, I had to drive four months with the stocks, and to me it looked funny. I didn't want to buy tires because I had 30, 34s yeah. on it at the time, so it looked kind of funny. How different does it drive? Do you um, get more stability out of this? Like, do you, does it, Can you feel the difference? Yes, I can definitely feel, like with the other ones, with the factory tires yeah. and rims, I could feel the grooves in the road more. Maybe because it was the type of tire I was running, I don't really know. The 12 wise, I feel planted. When yeah. I hit a corner, I used to have to slow down at the beginning. I would slow down to, you know, if I was going to a corner you that feel was 45. I felt top heavy because yeah. the tires were tucked. Yeah. Now I see a little wider. There's not near as much, but I had a lot of body roll for okay. those four months. So, I mean, that's one thing I kind of want to emphasize to people is that a lot of people, especially the ones that tow and just don't like the look of wide wheels, complain about the setup. But we're here to tell you guys today that it, it's actually very practical. It actually does add to the drivability and performance of, of it, especially if you're towing something. Yeah, I have zero complaints of towing with a lift in 22 by 12. So I have zero complaints. Right. I can't think of, of anything. I mean, I ran enough tired where my wife driving, me driving, <laughs> I've hit a curb. I ain't going to lie to you, I've hit a curb. But there is no curb marks. Right. I have not had to go get them fixed or anything. Just, that's just just enough tire for a curb. I Hit mean, a bad pothole, go yeah. into a campground. I mean, you, you gotta think heavy campers come in and out every day. There's potholes. Never a perfect campground. So I ain't worried about my rims messing up. Yeah, it's it's low range F. Yep. Yeah, and it holds. Let's see if I can find where the thing right there. 80 psi. Hmm. Can't tell. Yeah. 
80 PSI when cold. Some people, whenever they hear 22s, they're going to be like, oh, rubber bands, blah, blah, blah. No. And some people are, like, really stuck on running 20s. Yeah. Anything over 20-inch wheel, they're going to say rubber bands. But look at that. That's... And I got a big hand. Do you, though? I do. Okay. <laughs> so this is a 22 on 36s. I think that's a decent amount of sidewall. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? I've seen people run 35s, and it looks the tire looks too small. Yeah. I mean, it was either... I was going to either put 36s or 37s. I was in between. All my buddies were telling me 37s now. Yeah. Run 37s, run 37s. I was scared. I'll be honest with you. I was scared. But 36s turned out perfect. 36s did turn out perfect. I can I have full turn radius. Didn't have to do the NorCal delete mm -hmm. or whatever trim. If I had to do it again, this would be, and this was a towing truck, mm -hmm. I would do the exact same everything. Lastly, amp steps. For the wife and the kids. You it, got, it was about hilarious watching my wife jump <laughs> up in this truck. And I was like, try to go get in JW's truck. Right? That, that was a selling point. <laughs> yeah. Because I have amp stats. I mean, a lot of people like the amp stats and a lot of people don't. Uh, pros and cons would be if you had the regular factory steps, it, it would actually reduce the amount of rock chips, I would say, that you get on the door. But the factory running boards only come down to about, like, here. Yeah. So it really doesn't provide much of height. And I ran them for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I just got them installed, I think, six months ago. Mm -hmm. So I never really liked the factory running boards because I really don't think they do no, much. Because they, they only drop. They don't help you that much uh -uh. anyway. Yeah, they don't help you near that much. You got to think, factory running boards come they down to here. Up. Yeah, they tuck up right up in there. Just like right here. So I mean, you got an inch and a half easy of clearance. Nine to 12 inches of drop. So that's a lot more drop than factory steps. But not only that, when you're not using the steps, they get tucked up and they look really good. Another thing to think about though, if you're thinking about getting amp stamps, make sure not to buy the ones for your truck. Buy them for 1500. That's right, if you don't have the def if tank. If you don't have a def tank. Because we'll have to show you guys Donnie's show when he gets here, but Donnie has the one for the def tank and it's also for the 2500. His comes all the way over here. And the mounting position, mounting bracket is right here. So he actually rubs on the mounting bracket if he's at a full turn. And also this tucks up better because the ones for the def, it slants down like this. Yeah, they slant down. Even though you have low profile amp steps, it doesn't look that like great. That. It doesn't look that low profile. So yeah, that's a good point. If you have a 2500 and you don't have the def tank right there, you can get the 1500 ones and they mount exactly the same 20 plus don't have the def tank right there so you can also run our 1500 style running boards anything else you want to point out of why your truck is the most practical lml well one thing other way i would say is before doing the lift and the wheels and tires i dug into the engine and the transmission a deep dish pan on my transmission mm -hmm. so it could hold i think five more quarts keeps my transmission a lot cooler when towing put a bigger diff pan on the back it holds a quart and a half more so Devin put the PPE differential cover so if you guys need that head over to JW More Sports Co we sell them on the website and we can have them delivered to you and if you want them powder coated DM us on JW More Sports Co we have Southern Showstopper who powder coats these diff covers and we can get something set up for you guys one last thing. Pull on the camper, you get a flat tire. Yeah. Didn't check your spare before you left the house. There you go. Install one of those. I can't tell you how many times I've had to use that on hit a pothole going down the interstate, blow my tire out. Did you really? My spare, yeah, on my last camera trip. Huh. On the way to the mountains. Hit a corner a little too hard and it popped my right front on the trailer. I did not do my pre trip inspection. Yeah. My spare was not up to, uh, I think it's 80 pounds. It was at 55, so you could tell a dip when I let the camper down. I get my little chuck. It reaches back. It's on an extendable lead. Reaches back, pumped it up to 80. Got back on the road. That's why I carry that jack in the back, too. And you have train horns yep. in which when you're towing your fifth wheel, I, I don't know what it is about people. people. Drive, stupid. I don't know what it is about people just pulling out in front of a truck towing something heavy. The, uh, dude. People serious? Uh, are, are, are people serious? Like, did they not see this big truck pulling a big camper? Like, it, this truck can't just stop on a dime like a Honda Civic. And you can really get their attention by blowing the train horns. Oh, yes, for sure. So, I mean, for, honestly, a lot of people have mixed feelings about train horns. But for me, like, in terms of safety, yeah. I mean, you have to get people's attention when you're towing. I don't, I don't honk the horn in general a lot. But when you need to. But if somebody pulls out in front of me, they're going to get the horn. But yeah. That's why I also 
had it wired to my actual horn because I knew I didn't hit my actual horn a lot. Yeah. I might want to hit a button more. Yeah. But I'm not going to hit my actual horn that much. But when somebody's pulling out in front of me, I mean, that was twice on the way to uh, Dillard. Car pulled out in front of me. And they my don't speed up. in front of me. Yeah. I had to go into the other lane, so I went running in the back of my dad because yeah. I can't see around another camper that's in front of me. Right. And people like pull out in front of me and they don't speed up. Yeah. And it's like your truck, we have a heavy duty truck, so you already can't stop on a dime like oh, a car. No. If you're towing something that's over 10,000 pounds behind you, yeah. definitely not going to be able to stop on a dime. So yeah. there's a lot of a lot of clueless people. Knuckleheads. <laughs> Bless their hearts. <laughs> there's a lot of um, knuckleheads on the road that don't pay attention. So train horns will definitely get there. Yes, it will. Yeah, it will definitely get their attention when they're not, you know, paying their own. And you got your hitch, BMW hitch that's flipped the other way, so yep. you're not using your your uh, your hitch. You're well, not, not just busting that. your shin. When I'm have the camper hooked up i mean the camper stops right here yeah so i need to come around to do something on this side of the truck check on my kids or whatever you know i'm not having to i can go in between the camper True. that's right here without having to either step over or you know not machine like you said so yeah that's the reason i went with that i really want to get a gen y hitch but that's the reason i went with that one i don't know what do you guys think do you guys agree with us i think this is one of the most practical I, i'm gonna keep saying it this is one of the most practical lmls on the road if you guys agree let me know in the comments below if you don't agree also let me know in the comments below why you don't agree maybe maybe you don't agree because you don't like lifted trucks in general but how does your truck drive after being lifted oh it drives it drives way better in stock right yeah it drives way better i mean i don't i didn't like the nose dive in the beginning with i said the only way to fix it i didn't want to crank the keys up because it makes it ride bad yeah. i tried it put the lift on and it drives way better than uh than factory for sure yeah. and you're a little bit higher so you can actually see, see over, over I mean, like look at that car. yeah exactly look at that and i can see the bottom of the fence sitting in the truck mm-hmm and so I would say, like, if you're towing something, that is an adva advantage to have because sure. you want to be able to see at least three to four cars ahead of you yep. just to see what's going on. Because you want to be aware of your everything, surroundings. your surroundings, everything on the road, especially when you're towing. So, I mean, you're towing your house that you're yeah. going to stay, you know, in. So you're towing your house. So, I mean, you want to make sure on that drive there that you're, you know, aware of everything around you and it's as safe as possible. Yep. So... I think we covered everything. Um, he has rock lights in which they look cool, oh, yeah. but not only that, they provide visibility at night when you're towing. Yep, uh, turning. Turning, seeing things around around you, curbs. I mean, did it actually come in handy the last week? It did. Yeah? Yep, because we left early in the morning. It was raining. The campground had a bunch of sharp turns that I needed to make. Only thing I say is we need to put some on the camper. Okay. I couldn't see where the camper yeah. tires were. But my truck, I wasn't worried about hitting the curb. Exactly. This truck's been built to do the job, and do it's what it was meant to do. Yeah, and it's doing the job well, and I think that's kind of the route I'm gonna go with this truck. Except I'm gonna get a little bit more ignorant. We're gonna probably compound turbo this truck. What do you think about that? That's badass. You yeah. don't have me itching. <laughs> so yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this setup, and let me know if you guys are excited for this truck and let me know if you guys think i should do the compound turbo on this truck you buy the compound yeah. and i'll give you my setup and we just do a little swap oh swap yeah there. so yeah. i get your setup and you get the compound i get the compound i don't think that's very fair to <laughs> me but i mean hey, it's just a suggestion it's there. a it's suggestion? Just suggestion all right i'm gonna respectfully decline that all suggestion right. i don't blame you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah let me know in the comments below what you guys think and uh you want to give them a little sleep sneak peek of what's next on this truck on this truck on your truck Sneak peek of what's next. I don't know. What is next?